Hi everyone, I'm Lisa and welcome to Lisa's Stamp Studio. I've got a really simple and cool fall card for you today using glossy cardstock. We're going to use the sponge brayers to add color to the base of this card and do some over stamping. And of course, it's got some glimmer to it. I'm excited to share some tips with you along the way as well. Let's head over to the stamp table and let's get started on today's project. Here's a good close-up of the card we're going to be creating together today. I know you've got a glare from the studio lights and that's because of the glossy cardstock base. This leaf image actually came from the stamp set called Blended Seasons. It's actually a very large stamp set. It comes in two stamp cases. You can buy it either in clear mount like I have here or in wood mount. I have pulled out a couple pieces to use with you today. The one reason I really love this stamp set is the multitude of images that are going to carry you throughout the year as well as the varied greetings. You're going to be able to use it for just about any occasion as well as fall and Christmas. This stamp set is all part of a current promotion called Color Your Season with Stampin' Up. Now it's only available from August 1st till August 31st or while supplies last, which means if these products sell out before August 31st, they're going to be gone forever. So it's an exclusive stamp set. In addition to the stamp set, you can also purchase the framelits that are here. There are pieces inside the framelits that are not part of the stamp set, really expounding its use, especially these stitched frames. Hang with me to the end of the video because I've got some additional samples to show you using these other images as well as the framelits. Now part of this special also includes a brand new package of watercolor pencils. This 10 pack of watercolor pencils are brand new colors that we've introduced, which are gonna really help you create some beautiful colors in the stamp set here. There are also a current pack of 13 watercolor pencils that are in the annual catalog. If you don't already have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator and you are interested in Stampin' Up! products, I would be more than happy to send you a complimentary copy of the catalog. You can choose to purchase the stamp set by itself or if you want the framelits as well, you can purchase them as a bundle and save yourself 10%. Let's get started on today's card. I'm bringing in an extra scrap of grid paper here to use this foam brayer. And I've also got a piece of glossy cardstock. Now let me give you a couple tips about the glossy cardstock. The oils from your skin or even lotion on your hands can create a resist on this paper. They'll leave an impression that's not visible with your eye, but when you add the ink, it'll actually repel color in those areas. So make sure your hands are clean and dry when you get started. Now, there's a variety of ways to use glossy cardstock. This is just one of them. I'm gonna be using the soft suede ink pad. I'm gonna go ahead and open that up. And I'm also going to be using the sponge brayer. You can see that I've used this to create the original card that I just shared with you. But we're going to roll color on here, very much like a rolling pin. Because this is foam, it's just a spongy material, you're going to be able to apply the ink very easily. You're going to want to make sure that you ink it all the way around. So don't just do this because you're only going to get ink in a small area. Pick it up and roll it so it's going all the way around the brayer. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply the ink here on the paper. And you're going to see that I'm working on and off the cardstock. And you can tell I need a lot more ink. So we're going to go ahead and just ink that up again. Rolling it across the ink pad just to load it up with color. And then I'm going to come back across here. So I'm working on and off the paper all the way across to add color. And you can also see that we've got an intensity difference. Also creates great backgrounds if you're really looking for some interest. But in this case, for today's card, I want my background to be solid. So I'm gonna go back over this and apply more ink. Well, look at that. I had a small piece of paper on my stamp table. I didn't even realize. Do you see how it's left a small dot there as a resist? Let's see if we can go ahead and cover that. Loading up my brayer once again, and then we're gonna go back over that. Yep, I think we are gonna be able to do that. Same thing would happen like I talked to you in the introduction about making sure that you don't have oils and ink on your fingers because it will create a resist. So I'm gonna repeat this process several times until I get the coverage on this paper that I'm looking for. You can see some very faded lines, but it's gonna actually lend credence to looking more like designer series paper than just regular cardstock. I'm gonna set the brayer aside, but to give you a tip about this, you can actually pull this off here. It does dislodge, 
And you can just run this underneath the sink with mild dish soap and water and let it air dry. You can then reuse it in other colors. It will become stained from the pigmentation of your ink. Just test it on your scratch paper to make sure that it runs free of the previous color. Then you're able to pop this right back in and use it on a different ink pad. This is going to need to dry for me to do my next step. If you have a heat tool, you can go ahead and apply some heat just to speed up the drying process or set it aside for about three to five minutes. I've got my heat tool. I'm gonna go ahead and use it on speed two, which is the highest speed. And I'm gonna speed up that drying process. I've gone ahead and I've mounted the image of the leaves from that stamp set. And you're gonna see that this image is rather large. You can go ahead and ink it up this way, or if you prefer, you can hold it upside down and ink it face up on your work surface. This will ensure that you don't miss an area. And I'm gonna create a border on this card with my images along the side. So I'm gonna start here at the top and I'm gonna press. Glossy cardstock is a little slick, so you're gonna to wanna to use a steady hand. Lots of firm, even pressure to make sure the stamp doesn't slide. Now I'm gonna repeat that exact same process to fill in this area here at the bottom, just tapping and traveling, and then I'm gonna manipulate the stamp just a little bit so I have a slightly different pattern. And then I'll press and repeat that same process. Now you can set this aside to dry, or again, you can use your heat tool to speed up the process. And I've cut myself a small piece of early espresso cardstock, and I want to do a little bit of heat embossing. I always want to prep the surface of my paper before I stamp my words or my greeting. By using the embossing buddy, there's an anti-static powder inside of here that's going to tell the powder not to stick where there is an ink. It helps to deflect from those small flecks of embossing powder that you don't want. I'm going to use my Versamark ink. And from that same stamp set, I've mounted the words, thank you. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna tap and I'm gonna ink those up. I always like to check to make sure that I don't have ink around my edges, it looks good. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna stamp that here, oh, about the center of this piece of paper. Lots of firm, even pressure. I'm gonna quickly bring in my coffee filter, which is gonna help me catch my excess embossing powder. And I'm using the gold and I'm covering that ink with the gold powder. And I'll just gently tap off the excess and that's gonna leave me a real powdery finish. I know it's gonna be difficult to see, but this is where the magic comes in with the heat tool. The heat tool is nice and warm right now since I've been using it to dry the glossy paper. So all I'm gonna do is concentrate on one area and you're gonna see that powder is going to turn to a metallic gold foily type finish. Make sure you keep your fingers away from the heat tool. It is hot. It's also real important that you don't overheat it because otherwise the image itself will look embedded into the paper instead of foily and raised. I want to create a banner tip on this side and here is an awesome tip for you. This is the tailored tag punch. You're gonna find this area right here at the top is gonna make the perfect banner tip. So I'm gonna hold my cardstock where I want my banner tip to be and I'm gonna flip it upside down so I can see where I'm going. I'm gonna slide that in, I'm gonna manipulate it to indicate where I want it. And then when I'm happy with where I have it positioned, I'm just looking to make it as even as I possibly can. I'm gonna lightly squeeze down on the punch, which will help lock the paper in place. And then all I have to do is squeeze and that'll punch us out a perfect banner tip every time. I want a little bit of fun to this. I wanna create some curvature. I don't want it to be too flat since there really are very many layers to the card base. So I'm gonna use my bone folder. I'm gonna come up underneath and I'm gonna use it to curl it very much like you would do curling ribbon for a package. And I'm gonna do the same thing on the opposite ends. So I've got a little bit of a 3D effect going on here. So let's set that aside. Let's come over now to the card base, which is the same as that piece of paper we did the banner on. And this is Early Espresso. I'm gonna use my bone folder for that nice crisp edge on my paper. And remember that glossy cardstock that we just created? Well, this is gonna get mounted here. So I'm gonna flip that over as well. And I'm gonna use a generous amount of adhesive on this to adhere this to the base of my card. It's gonna get mounted here with just a little bit of a border around that base and I'm gonna flip it over and I'm gonna rub from the back just in case I have an area there that has not dried. I don't risk smearing it. 
The next step for me is going to add the words to this card. I prefer to use glue dots, so I've got those here, and I'm going to reveal a couple of those just to add to the back. Now, I prefer to take my project and add it to the glue dot versus trying to lift them. So I'm going to lay them here, and I'm going to add three. One on each end, and then one in the center as well. And then I'm going to add that here at the very edge of my card. Lining up the edge as close as I possibly can, and I'm going to tack that down. But do you see how this here has a little bit of a boing effect? It's you know going to be difficult to get it in and out of the envelope. So here's another tip for you. I'm going to grab my paper piercing tool to help me lift off another glue dot. I'm not even concerned that this may be distorted in shape because it's going to go right here behind the letter T and that's going to just tack that in place, which allows me to keep that curvature to the card. I've got my big shot die cutting machine here and I'm using the magnetic platform. I'm a big fan of this when I'm using framelits because it'll help hold them in place. You're going to want to put one of the clear cutting mats on the bottom to protect your platform and I'm going to pull out this beautiful detailed leaf that's here part of the framelits set. I've got a piece of the gold glimmer paper. Now, this year in the Stampin' Up! catalog, we actually changed it. We have removed that glossy type paper backing, which is going to make this super easy to die cut. So I'm going to lay that here on my platform, place the die on top, and I'm going to put another clear cutting mat over the top to protect the die. And then I'm going to crank this through. No electricity required. Any popping, cracking is all normal. It's all part of the compression of the rollers of the Big Shot. And I always flip it over to make sure that it's die cut well, and you can see that it is. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to remove that. And you can see it's going to fall right through there. And a little bit of a wiggle is going to have these small pieces come right out. If you're having any difficulty, go ahead and use your Big Shot die brush while the die is still intact on the paper. Otherwise, this is a great place for you to use your paper piercing tool to help you pop out those small pieces. So we're just pushing out the negatives to get that image. Here we are back to the base of our card that we just assembled, and we've got that beautiful gold leaf that we're going to add here. It's going to really bring out that gold embossing. I'm going to use a glue dot again, and I'm going to place it right here in the center base of my leaf. I'm going to press and I'm going to lift. Any glue dot that's exposed, I'm just kind of curling it to the back. Now I'll tack that down here at the bottom. Now I'm going to add a little bit of twine here to the top to add a little bit more dimension to this card. The burlap ribbon is really one of my favorite ribbons in the catalog because it's extremely versatile. Not only can you use it like this, which is great for masculine seasonal cards, but you can also actually pull out strands, either one, two, or more at a time to create thicker individual pieces to use on your card. So I've got two that I've pulled out here. And I'm going to do a single loop bow because I want to make sure this doesn't look too feminine with a bow itself. And if you haven't seen me do this before, I'll make sure that I go slow enough you can follow with me. Go ahead and make a loop as if you were going to make a bow and then come around. Now typically when you would make a bow, you would pull this other strand through and then stop to make your two loops. But with a single loop, you're actually going to pull it all the way through, which is going to leave you just with this one loop here at the top. Pull it tightly. And then what you can do if your loop is too big is you can manipulate the ends to make it smaller till you get it to the size that you want. And it should keep the tension for you. Now I'm going to go ahead and attach this to the leaf. I'm going to put a glue dot here on the back of the bow and I'm going to lift. And just like we did before, any excess glue dot that's showing, I'm going to wrap towards the back. And then I'm going to place this here at the bottom of the stem. I've got my paper snips here, and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to trim away the excess of what I don't want on my card. That'll leave us with this really pretty single loop bow to finish off the card. Now here's the one we've created today. Here's the one I created before you joined me. Now you may be thinking, well, why are they two different colors? Well, I want to talk to you a little bit more about glossy cardstock. It has been my experience that over time, as the ink processes with the paper, that the ink actually changes colors. So although this is soft suede and it looks like it now, it's going to darken up to be a little bit closer shade than the early espresso. My advice to you is take a piece of glossy cardstock and experiment with the colors that you want to use. Let them sit overnight and then come back and look at them to see that you've achieved the color that you're looking for. I'm so glad that you joined me today. You're going to be able to find pictures, 
cutting dimensions and the supplies that I used down in the description bar if you're here visiting from YouTube. I promise to show you some other cards using this exact same bundle of products. Here's the first one. I shared this in a video last week. If you missed it, go ahead and click on the link in the description bar below and you can get a better look at it. I also created this one, again, using the same floral that's inside that stamp set, but you can see by varying the dyes that are included, you can get some really different looks. This one uses the wheat image that's inside the same stamp set. Again, a more masculine look. And I did use the watercolor pencils that are part of this special on these cards as well. This Christmas card, nice and simple. And yes, those are watercolor pencils on crumb cake cardstock. And then finally, if you'd like a more stepped up version of that Christmas card, I've got this one here. And I've got the holly that's been hand cut. There is no die for the holly, but it took literally just minutes. And then I use the die for the small sprigs that are in the back, as well as this beautiful open bow that I used with red glimmer paper. And again, look at those beautiful stitched labels for the die background on this card. Lots of great things that you can do with this bundle. The blended season two-piece stamp set and the stitched seasons framelits, which you can buy individually or you can buy together as a bundle for a 10% savings. And then the beautiful new 10 pack of watercolor pencils that I use to color these cards. If you don't already have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator and you would like a complimentary copy of the current catalog, I would be more than happy to send you one. Just leave me a comment below. Thanks so much for joining me, everyone. I look forward to seeing you next time. Have a great day.